Why? There we go. That's what I wanted to see. One of those shots. There we go. Okay, let's see what we just killed. Greetings, you human equivalents of a beautiful sunrise in the middle of the day, and welcome back to From the Depths with me, Alathrex, and of course, welcome back to the adventure mode where today we are currently in a blue portal zone, which means there are no enemies absolutely anywhere, there are red portals absolutely everywhere, and today all we're really focusing on is completely changing our craft. Today is going to be a very build-heavy day where we go from our current sled chrysalis into its finalized form of a proper tank, changing its weapons, its movement types, probably its engine type. I really doubt you're going to recognize this craft after everything has been said and done and because of that we're going to be building in the designer mode rather than here in the adventure mode because well, there's no threats here. It's just a lot easier in the designer mode where we can float our craft, we can flip it if we cause any mistakes, and there's a whole host of other mechanics which just make building easier, though not exactly anything cheesy. It's just less time consuming and will drive me a little bit less insane. So I'll be right back in the vehicle designer where, well, there's a lot of stuff we need to get done. Also in the design mode, there's no rain. So that's nice. Always feels weird when chunks just fall off your craft when you're doing major renovations. It's at this moment I realise it might be easier to just start from scratch. I'm going to be keeping nothing if I keep on doing this. Oh, it's annoying, but I think so. Been messing around with different sizes for the overall shape of this craft, so don't take anything I'm doing for the next maybe few hours for anything I'm definitely going to be doing, but I'm thinking maybe like this. It looks very bland right now, but I'll definitely add some texture to this. We can always add rise sections moving upwards, which can hold secondary weapons. Some craft like the brush cutter, I think, from the Steel Striders has a forward-facing weapon built in, which I quite like, which I could always replicate here by myself. I'm trying my best not to look at the designs, otherwise I'm going to be way too influenced by them. Then we can have very, very large tracks on both sides. So with the tracks, we have an option really. To either go with lots of the small wheels and build them into the shape we want to add the effect of a large track, or just go with the much larger wheels. I've never really gone with the larger wheels, so I think that's probably what I'm going to end up with. We make a track out of that, maybe give them more of a gap each or something, so we can build some things around them, make them look a bit more interesting. I I think that's what I'm going to go with. The main weapon is still going to be the big selling point of this thing, so I do need plenty of space. That's why I've cut it off so quickly from this front rise. Now I'm going to lower this by at least two, maybe three more underneath. That should be enough space for a decent railgun, especially with how wide it's going to be. Okay, so this is like half an hour later because I've changed my mind about this probably more than any other design I've ever had. Currently, it's about two-thirds of the length of what the sled was. It is a little bit thinner, but not by much, because these wheels are extended massively. And you might be wondering, Lathrix, why have you put them so far out to the side? Because I've made them do this. The tracks are all set to spin blocks, similar to the Land Marauder from the Dustwind, and I kind of love it. It means turning while moving feels a lot smoother and sillier, in my opinion. It gives it a bit of a slide, which I really enjoy after playing as the sled for so long, but we could still set the wheels to have normal tank controls. Hi everyone, Future Lathrix here once again with this series. So I'm only here really to say a huge thank you to everyone who has been supporting this series so far. It has breathed new life into the channel over the last few weeks and it's definitely a game which has just been utterly addictive to play. I was actually meant to be recording something else while recording this video, but I ended up just really, really wanting to finally build our tank, which goes through a lot of renovation in this episode before finding potentially my new ultimate favourite weapon. This was a serious joy to record, even though it took far longer than usual. Name suggestions for the craft, other comments and likes are all very, very welcome, and thank you again so much for your continued support in this series. It has helped out so much in this weird time on YouTube. Thank you so, so much. And now, back to the past, building what is going to be one of my more powerful designs. Okay, the wheels are now set to normal tank controls, with the spin block still active. I mean, that's not too bad. Actually, that's not too bad at all. I expected the spin blocks to be way more detrimental to that. I mean, that's fine. Maybe that's all I have then. Let's move forwards. We're currently running out of power, but that's fine. And now we turn with the tank controls still active. Oh, it's a little bit more sluggish, but not by much. 
that's weird. That's a weird hybrid of the wheel movements, but it is very Lathraxian of me to do that, so you know what? I think I'm going to leave it like that. And now I don't know what to call this vehicle. If we keep these tracks like this, can people tell me what type of vehicle this would actually be classed as? That would be great. Till then, I'm going to call it the Roving Potato. So what I've done is minimize how much the spin blocks are actually turning us right now. So that means that it's a lot less obvious what's going on, so I think that looks a lot better. While still giving the same feel for me while I'm actually using the thing. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. Also, ignore the current color scheme. I'm messing around with taking away some of the shininess, since I just like that. Though, having it purely reflective would be interesting as well. What I'm thinking is maybe the base color have it as complete matte like that, and then when we go with the other colors, adding some shininess to that instead might give it more of an effect. Maybe. Not too sure. Either way, I'm pretty happy with this so far, honestly. Obviously, none of the details are really hot yet, but as a base, yeah, I think this is going to work. Okay, I've definitely seen the bison before. Don't spawn spawning things you haven't seen before. Okay, you're going to be our test subject. This is a burst railgun with four meter long shells. I don't know if this is going to work properly, honestly. Oh my god. Well, a few notes. The damage was insane. Uh, it was a bit more consistent than I expected it to be. The shells were very slow. So that's a medium range weapon. That is stupid though. It's not even that expensive. We're still not on the 100k mark, I think. I lied, we're just over the 110,000 mark. Which will give us the 40,000 resources we had left as material and another 10,000. Okay, so we have 50,000 left if we go with this weapon. It's going to have a long reload. Yeah, still reloading now. It's got a very long reload on it, but the idea is it should just decimate other large targets. How about fast targets? And I'm still not sure about it. I am still considering a more conventional railgun that fires an 8 meter shell once every 10 or so seconds, so it's a lot more consistent. Because if those shots missed, we would now be completely vulnerable. Oh, it looks like some of those shots did actually land on the Firefly there. Oh, it is out of control. It's already gone. Okay, not too bad. The barrel is too slow, though. Yeesh. So that's the Longhorn, 120,000 resource, and yeah, even the Heavy Armoured had a tough time with that. I'm considering not using this type of weapon because that can just be scaled infinitely, and I am starting to think it might be a bit broken. Because I'm not particularly good with advanced cannons, and even I'm getting it to do that. But again, it does have the super long reload time as a punish. So if you miss, or just misfire in general, you're then gonna sit here, and I think it's like a 30 second reload. So that's an eight meter shell. Oh. I was testing on that earlier, but I didn't think I did that much damage. Okay, so that's an eight meter shell. It can fire 20 times per minute, reliably. It fires 800 meters per second, and it's an armor penetration high explosive, an APHE with a pen depth fuse, which means it goes into the target and then detonates, causing internal damage, up to 40,000 damage of internal damage. I'm thinking that's a lot more satisfying than the last gun, to be perfectly honest, without feeling as silly. And it's surprisingly cheaper. The only negative it has is it takes more energy, so it's going to require a larger engine. Everything else... This might be the one to go forwards with. Plus, 8 meter shells. When can you use 8 meter shells? So I think I've decided I'm going to go with the 8 meter railgun. The reason is this. It is just so incredibly satisfying. You can take out so much in just a single shot. 
Now, I don't really know where the AI is on the bison. Is it like here? Oh, there we go. AI dead. So if you know the enemy, you can just obliterate it from such a good range. And even just for sheer damage, if you hold down fire, it is going to fire 20 times per minute. That's what we're going with. I need to do some work, though, to make the Tetris correct, because I have never actually built a fully functioning 8-meter railgun on a budget before. And that fell. And it's gone. Okay, so I've actually downgraded the gun now. Now it's a 7 meter gun instead. Uh, that is to say, 7 meter shells. But the gun is firing them faster at 1,200 meters per second. That means it's going to be incredibly long range and the kinetic capability is massively increased. Now it could slow the shell down if we don't have enough energy for it. And the reason why I've gone away from 8 meter is because it was just too expensive. So that's going to be something we upgrade in the future. Definitely the path this tank's going to go. Eventually it'll be an 8 meter gun instead. And for now, though, I think this will be more than enough. One good shot in Anywhere Vital, and the entire thing is just gone. Okay. Let's continue our bodywork, then. Also in the background, I did do loads of tests with fragment shells instead, and flak and everything else. High explosive just seems the most fun, the most visually appealing, and honestly, it seems pretty effective. I will never get turret caps correct, though I kind of like this one, this is just the first few levels, it's going to go up at least one more. What I'm thinking is, removing this chunk here and adding a very small advanced cannon, just a belt fed loader kinetic one, or flak or something like that, so we have an anti-air weapon biked into the main turret. Then secondary weapons can be added to the front where there's going to be loads of space, and any anti-missile missiles I can place pretty much anywhere, there's armour and space available. Definitely a lot bigger than I originally intended, but again, this means I don't have to keep on changing the, the chassis every time I want to add anything to it. A slight change of plan, I will be adding the advanced cannon still, but for now I've added a missile interceptor. So these are much larger than some of the ones we've been seeing in the regular land adventure. They have a sticky flare, they also have a radar decoy. The idea is, they're more expensive, but they should bring the enemy missiles to them. So even if they don't destroy an enemy missile, it should throw them off course. Yeah, as you can see, the missiles are actually going after our interceptors, which means, there they go, all gone. Perfect. And that will happen automatically if a missile gets within 1,500 meters of us. Well, took out some of its controls there. Oh, AI dead. <laughs> yep, yeah, we definitely killed it. <laughs> of course. <laughs> we needed to use hands. Just slap those missiles out of the air. Perfect. <laughs> I promise at some point I'm going to make a video where I just spend hours making various custom missiles. People seem to be interested in that, so don't worry. That will happen in the future. For now, though, I'm super happy with just slapping the enemy missiles out of the air. Okay, most of the internal armoring is now done, and I am running into the problem of we are running out of money very, very quickly. We don't really have all that much left, so there's a good chance for now we're going to just have the main gun. We're not going to have the advanced cannon. I do want to keep the slapping missiles intact, so they're going to stay. It's all just got a bit more expensive than I expected. On the upside, though, I am pretty happy with the design. I think the turret cap could be a little bit bigger with how large the craft is, but I think once I start adding secondary weapons and little extra stuff on the top, that's not going to be such a big issue. But, yeah, tell me what you think. I'm not good with tank sizes. Just need to finish off all the armor. So I've got heavy armor around the turret itself. Attached to the turret, I've then got heavy armor as in actual heavy armor around that after an air gap. And then I have some metal as well. May have done that in the wrong order, but by the way, I can check that in a second. I have loads of armor and EMP protection around the RTGs, about to re-add the batteries. Then we're also going to add a fuel engine. So how I'm going to do this is how I've done this in the past adventure modes. I'm going to have the RTGs work all of the time, but then if we get below 20% battery, then the fuel engines will kick in in order to make sure everything is still functioning, we can still move, and everything else. If we then go above... 20% or 30%, whatever I actually set it, then the fuel engines will turn off because obviously the fuel engines, though cheap to put down, will constantly burn resource. So RTGs normally, in a time of peril, the fuel engines kick in.
Okay, we seem absolutely fine on rough terrain. That's great. No damage taken just yet. Good. Good. Okay, now I need to set up the fuel engines properly. Sometimes the simpler option is a better option, so instead we're just now doing this based on how much engine power I'm using, so a different priority system. The main priority is the electric engines. If we go, let's say, to maximum speed here, then the fuel engines kick in to compensate. That's it. And once the battery does go below 20%, that's when the fuel engines will kick in and start fueling the batteries directly because we need that for the main gun. All nice and simple. Okay, so here's the test. The materials are currently not being drained. The power's going up at a reasonable rate. If we use up enough power, yep, there we go. We're now below 20%, so the power's increasing much faster because the fuel engine's kicked in at the cost of resources. This way, we shouldn't be left without power at any given time for the rails, for movement, for pretty much everything. And same goes for movement. If we're moving, it's fine. Up until we use more power than the electric engine can give, then the fuel engines kick in to compensate. Absolutely fine. Now, we do need some more ammo barrels, clearly. But that should keep us reliable, whilst also mostly energy and material efficient, I think. We are really running out of resources, though. I think I have, like, 5,000 more resources to play with, so some ammo and armor sections. Then we're pretty much done. I think extra decorations I'll do once I'm back into the regular mode, because we can do that while we're traveling around, since sometimes it can take up to an hour between engagements if you're unlucky, so... Yeah, things like this corner here and just loads of other stuff we can do as we're moving, including the paint job. The complete rebuild begins. Okay, heading towards the first red portal. I'm really looking forward to our first combat versus enemies in difficulty 65. I don't really have all that much time now, so I'm hoping enemies arrive very quickly. I've been at this pretty much all day at this point. Decorations and everything will be happening in the next video. Trust me, I want this thing to look decent. And it's still, I would say, about 50% done. It's functioning, it's got its main weapon, it's got its movement and its basic protections, but it needs multiple side weapons, it needs a better anti-missile system, and honestly, it just needs the paint job and decorations and everything else. Right now, it's just a chunky boy. Okay, that is the Matrix, apparently. It has particle cannons, I can see, though they're not too accurate. And missiles just took out their initial missiles, so they're probably still reloading. Ah, bad timing there. We did get one direct hit, though. Two direct hits. Hopefully we're taking something out of the inside. Looks like it. There's a lot of weird little things then falling to the ground. Hopefully we can tank those particle cannons. It seems like we've done something to it already. And gone. Okay, our first kill. So that was the Matrix. I'm not sure how expensive that was. 71k now, but that's with all the innards gone. So the railgun proving it's worth there very, very quickly. Yeah, it got inside, detonated, and you can, as you can see, it's just hollowed the whole thing out. Okay, very, very happy with the first test of the railgun. Ooh. Ah, oh, I've managed to take out an RTG. That's annoying. Still, we can get loads of resources from that, so definitely worth it. Most of the RTGs are covered in rubber. They're also covered in either regular armor or heavy armor. There's just a few on the side here where I had some extra space, where I put down a couple with just the rubber armor. That makes them very resistant to EMP, since they also have surge protectors on top of that. But apparently the uh, particle cannon got through. A lovely first fight. Didn't see the anti-missile system do much, though. It definitely took out the first wave of missiles. After that, I think we just got too close to the enemy. There's a twin guard just over this hill. It fired some missiles earlier, which our missiles managed to completely counter. Hasn't fired them again since. Torso or body, what should I go with here? Well, torso or base. I'm thinking torso, weirdly. Because it has so many advanced cannons, there's a chance we could cause some kind of chain reaction here. I mean, that's a good chunk of everything from its core there, but nope, not quite. There we go, that's what I wanted to see. Okay, I mean, that's pretty much it, right? There's no chance it's going to be able to repair all of that damage with the material it has with it. And if it does, we can just keep on, you know, firing it off over and over again. Goodbye to your missiles. Ooh, that looks like a lot of material just went. If I was your AI, where would I be? I'm guessing there or there. Maybe. What am I hitting? 
Okay, we might as well actually take a look. See, the enemy is pretty much disabled at this point. Oh wow, look at that. We stripped away all of its armor, but just left it just about surviving. That should be it, right? How did that survive? That's a weird mainframe. There we go, one more shot, tuck it out. That was so bizarre, maybe my shots are going through. Thank you. Is this gonna look good or really, really stupid is a question. Okay, you, uh, continuous. Sure. Okay, that obviously needs to be way more intense. We can't even see that light. Um, maybe with a different colour, like yellow, and moving a bit faster and only at night time, that would be kind of cool. Or perhaps targeting an enemy. That would be quite easy. If we put it on a, on a uh, two-axis turret. Yeah, that could look alright. Been doing some of the minor decorations here and there, changing up some of the colour scheme. And I'm trying to think of how to make this look a little bit more interesting. Because right now it's been 20 minutes and I haven't had any other enemies. And I am really running out of time today because I want this video to be out on Saturday. At this rate, it won't be. You'll just have to wait there, Larry. Okay, let's have a quick look-see. What do we have over yonder? Well, I saw some lasers, but then nothing else. Ooh, resource zone. Lovely. Uh, well, that is... Ow. <laughs> that is hurting itself. Clearly lightning hoods. That is a... Just a laser craft. Yeah, just a laser hovercraft. Not exactly a large one either. Not something too, too scary. Not gonna fire from here, though. How much is bouncing around? There is no chance that even our quick shells are gonna hit that thing. Uh, I guess I can fire one shot just to see what happens. No, I didn't think so. Okay, full speed ahead. Let's see if we can intercept it a little bit. That does seem like the terrain itself may have uh, wrecked this one a little bit. Ooh, is that gonna crash? Yep. Okay, that one's just going down by itself. Well, one hit and it was completely disabled, but there is now another enemy here, so I probably should stop firing at that thing. Ooh, that's a lot of enemy missiles. It looks like they were distracted by our missiles, though, and thus hit the ground. Let's hope this next enemy doesn't destroy itself quite as much as this first enemy. Ooh, took out its parcel cannon, I think. I think. I really don't want the thing to turn back online. Okay, that was a really good hit then on the base. A lot of damage done. Oh, once again a fantastic hit there. Yep, being able to get through a couple of layers of armor, just the critical hits are so satisfying. Oh, so much just fell out then. Okay, low materials, not really surprising. I kept gutting the thing. Though we actually took quite a bit of damage from its everything, and one of my battery compartments was breached. Oh, wow. I don't even know what that enemy was, but that shot went directly inside and just ruined its week. Month, year, life. Or at least today. Oh, that perfect shot as well. I am loving this weapon. Yeah, though, we took a beating chasing that thing down. Thankfully, we have layered armor pretty much everywhere, but I don't know how. But it managed to breach through one of our battery sections. Maybe it's the Partal Cannon. I don't know, but they're both dead. Needs a repair. There's a bison that just ran away. Like, it just spawned and ran. Occasionally it fires a Cram Cannon, which goes nowhere near us. Um, but it had such a head start, I'm never going to be able to catch it. So that's... nothing. Okay, we go to the east then, I suppose. 
just in case one of the cram shells ever do actually manage to hit us. I mean, honestly, they've been absolutely miles off when they've landed because its detection is just not good enough at that range, but still. Another well, the most exciting fight. I think I'm going to give it another half an hour, and then if there's no more fights, we're going to call it a day. I think I've definitely proved that this weapon is absolutely so much fun. And I can't wait to add more to this tank. I'm actually kind of growing to love it, which for me is very rare with one of my designs. Well, that's absurdly far away. And it is moving back and forth slightly, so if I try and fire now, it's gonna just miss, probably. Maybe then, because it stopped moving for a second. Yep, direct hit. Didn't seem to stop it, though, whatever it actually is. No, it's gonna miss because of the movement. That is so irritating. If it was perfectly still, we'd be hitting with every one of those shots. There we go. Okay, let's see what we just killed. Definitely the furthest kill I've had. So that took three shots, technically. The first one hit, the second one missed, the third one hit directly and cleared out the space inside. Whoa, that's a railgun, isn't it? That's a really cool railgun. You are the Hexer. Okay, you're definitely worth more than that, because I think I've seen you before. A test. Okay, I want to see what you're like then, because you are really interesting. Look at that heavy armor, how it's been placed on the bottom like that. Interesting. Whoa. Okay. Very interesting. Still, once again, proving our cannon a huge success there, even at long range. I did turn up the rail draw for that one, so it was taking significantly more. I think 140,000 en en energy per shot, if I can get my words out there. But it was flying at 1,600 meters per second, which is kind of insane. Okay, be right back into the designer mode. I want to see what the Hexer is like. It's a rapid fire cannon. So this is the bear, which is also uh, Steel Striders. I've just made it a different uh, faction. Wow, shields hard counter that weapon. Got a bit of delay on the aim as well. Interesting. Very interesting. What gauge is that gun? Oh, how the bear's moving is really throwing off its detection, it seems. That's really irritating. Look how many shots are just about missing. The blue you're seeing is tracer rounds to make it more accurate, but yeah, I think the bear might win this one. They're both struggling, though. No, the bear is losing. 88% health versus now 99. I think the missiles are really doing it. So two cram cannons and a small side advanced cannon. Oh, I wish I saw this thing's um, turret cap before I started building mine. I love the style of that. Though I try not to copy others' designs, though, to be fair. So maybe it's best I didn't see it. Oh, it does shear off armor when it's actually hitting directly. Look at that, a trail of confetti being left behind. Oh, it was coring it out. I was about to say it's going to win now. It's finally coring out the center, but it's just changed target. Wow, that is so elegant, those missiles. Its anti-missiles don't seem anywhere near good enough to counter the hexes, though. They'll even both credit for just hanging in there despite taking so much damage, though. Very well EMP protected. Look at this poor thing! Just hit something vital already! There we go! Very cool. So I must have hit the side here then. Gone through. Where even- Wow, there's so much packed in here. Okay. Yeah, it's gone right through there, through the fuel tanks, and just detonated directly in the right spot. Very cool design. I love those low-gauge weapons like that. Okay, let's spawn one in on our side. I really, really want to see how that weapon works. 
Then, I'm afraid, we'll be calling this a day. Hello, friendly Hexer. How you doing, bud? Okay, so... Oh, it's 18mm! So a... F wow, a full fire rate. 2,400 per minute. Yeah, it actually has enough for that as well. 2,438 rounds per minute it can manage based on the autoloaders and everything else. Just absolute minimum gauge. Love that. I love minimum gauge stuff like that. It's just so fun. Just love the whole design. It's so compact. Super cool. Really, really cool. I wonder what difficulty that's classed as then. So there's the Hexa. It's not a hard. It's not a medium. Oh, it's an easy design. I guess it was pretty easy to take out with a direct shot. I feel like this is going to counter any light armoured things or anything with any weaknesses because there's just so many hits, you're going to hit a weak spot eventually. Really cool though. Really, really appreciate this design. Ah, that's how it's done the missiles. Okay. Really neat. But with that, I'm afraid I am all out of time for today's video. It took an absolutely insane amount of time to build up the tank. There's still obviously a lot we need to do in terms of making it look a bit better. And we'll do that as we're moving from place to place and adding our new weapons. New weapon suggestions, very welcome, along with a name. Currently, as some of you may have noticed, it's named Not Ski Lad. Because before, it was Ski Lad. So with that, thank you so much for watching. If you have enjoyed today's video, then of course, likes, favourite, shares, comments, all that good stuff helps out me, helps out the channel, and most importantly, shows that From the Depths is a series you wish to see continued in the future. And until next time, goodbye. And stay hydrated once again. Maybe go and have a snack.